Hello guys, my name is Alan. Hi everyone, I'm Jacqueline. Hello all, my name is Jan. And our group did an experiment to simulate an inverted pendulum to model a descending rocket. A little background on our experiment. Our experiment was inspired by the Starship SN15, which is a spaceship designed by SpaceX. The Starship already did its testing, so all of this data is from that when that testing happened. It was powered by three Raptor engines, which each shut down in sequence prior to the vehicle reaching apogee, which was approximately 10 kilometers in altitude. It's con it was controlled under aerodynamic descent, which was accomplished by the independent movement of two forward and two aft flaps on the vehicle. And all four flaps were actuated by an onboard flights computer, which controlled the vehicle's altitude during flight and also enabled precise landing at the intended location on the, the pad. The three Raptor engines were reignited as the vehicle performed the landing tip maneuver immediately before touching down for a nominal landing on the pad. In our experiment, we simulated the landing of the Starship rocket in an upright position through a model of an inverted pendulum on a cart in MATLAB. And a diagram of the pendulum is shown to the right. We, the inverted pendulum and cart model was simulated through Simulink in MATLAB and shown below is the model used in, of the main system used in Simulink. This model to the left is a model representing the pendulum and cart system. Our Simulink model provides closed loop control for the pendulum, keeping it upright when a disturbance force is applied. And we used the Simulink model predictive controller MPC blocks, which are found in the Simulink MPC toolbox, which is an add-on in MATLAB, to vary our input force with varying parameters. The Simulink model design parameters that we used for our models are the simulation time is set to 30 seconds. The car is stationary at its start and it starts at x equals zero. The pendulum is also stationary at its start and the, theta, the pendulum starts at theta equals zero. The cart may move between x equals zero and 15. The system rise time should be less than or equal to four seconds. The percent overshoot should be less than five. When an impulse of magnitude two is applied, the cart should return to its original position with a maximum displacement of one. And finally, the pendulum should return to its upright position with a peak ankle displacement of 15 degrees or 0.26 radians. So for our first test, we set the parameters from x equals zero to 15. The figures on the left shows the system response based on the design parameters mentioned in the previous slide. From the top to bottom, we can, we can see the overall system response. Um, we can see the car's position, the car's velocity, the pendulum posi position, and the angular velocity of the pendulum. And for this test, we have applied force disturbance of magnitude two. In this video, we, will, we can see the pendulum's performance from zero to 15 from the affirmation slide. For our second test, we doubled the uh, we doubled the uh, allowable range of movement from fi from fifteen to thirty, which means that the pendulum would take a slightly longer amount of time to stabilize. And although the the constraints with the controller were specified to operate from only x from only zero to fifteen, it was functioning at x equals zero to thirty uh, in this figure. And for our last test, um, we increased the allowable range from 30 to 43. Uh, in this test, the controller fails as it was no longer able to keep the pendulum upright. The oscillation shows that the pendulum has fallen over. The controller was designed to operate from zero to 15, but, but was able to function up from zero to 42.
In this video, it will show a simulation of the cart moving from 0 to 42 without falling. Okay, for this set of trials, we're changing, instead of changing the distance that the cart may travel, we're changing the applied uh, disturbance force. In this case, we're changing it from two to five. We can see the main difference on the figure is the, the dip in the middle. So if we compare that to the aforementioned figures, we can see that this dip is quite uh, larger than before. This is expected as it, the controller needs to exert more force to counteract the disturbance force. So here we're doing the same thing, except now the the magnitude of the impulse is 10 instead of five. And we can see that the controller is starting to struggle a little bit, but it is able to keep the pendulum upright. So here we're do once again doing the same thing, but now we have a magnitude of 16. And so if we look at the dips, they are bigger and become somewhat oscillatory. The this is the furthest that the controller is able to, to function without changing any other parameters, minus the disturbance impulse, of course. So in, in this video, we can see uh, the simulation of the figure seen in the aforementioned slide. So the pendulum reacts quite violently to the disturbance force, but it is able to stay upright. So some important things to keep in mind while learning about these simulations is that we're only, this is, the simulation is an oversimplification of the falling rocket problem. We are not taking into account several disturbance forces such as air resistance, thrust control, wind speed, et cetera. We're also only changing one parameter at a time, in this case, either distance or disturbance force which is not the case in real world applications. Furthermore, the rocket that we based our project on, in this case, the Starship, has fins at both the top and bottom of the rocket. Um, so we essentially only have a fin at the bottom of our rocket. However, with this experiment, we are able to demonstrate the need for a robust controller that can work in a wide range of parameters and still function properly. These are our references used. Thank you for listening.